Nowadays, Eastern Europeans were at the forefront of Britain's immigration debate, but in the 1950s and 60s, it was the Afro-Caribbean and Asian communities. They faced discrimination and open hostility, not just from their neighbours, but from the authorities as well. And nowhere was this more prevalent than in Smethwick, on the outskirts of Birmingham, and it was this that prompted the visit of one of the most famous black activists of all time, Malcolm X. In February 1965, Malcolm X, a controversial American civil rights campaigner, visited Smethwick. This district on the outskirts of Birmingham was said by many at the time to be the most racist place in Britain. They're a nuisance when you've got to walk past them in the streets, they won't move. They're a nuisance at work, they won't work. They use the back garden for toilets. They don't, I don't think they know what the toilets are for. Their way of living is not like that the white people. Along with Martin Luther King Jr, Malcolm X was perhaps the most famous American black rights activist of the 20th century. And the Negro community makes a mistake when it tries to say we're as good as you are because they're admitting that you're better. I, I personally don't endorse that. He came to show support for the black and Asian communities who were experiencing high levels of racism from the white population, many of whom were finding it hard to adjust to the influx of immigrants. I never really learned much about him growing up because my parents didn't really speak about him. It wasn't until I started to understand my position as a black person in Britain, I started looking into the American Civil Rights Movement and also learning about him and Martin Luther King. I didn't even know he came to Birmingham until really recently. Even today, Malcolm divides opinion. Whilst Luther King promoted peaceful demonstration, many said Malcolm advocated violence. Well, any time you live in a society supposedly based upon law, and it doesn't enforce its own law because the color of a man's skin happens to be wrong, then I say those people are justified to resort to any means necessary to bring about justice where the government can't give them justice. So controversial was he that immediately before his visit to Smethwick, he'd been refused entry to France. But things are rarely as simple as they seem. Well, Malcolm X is one of the most important and one of the most misunderstood figures probably of the, of the 20th century. And his story, his journey of how he gets to where he is in his politics is really part of who Malcolm X is. Malcolm witnessed racial violence through his childhood. His father was killed by white supremacists. He ended up going to care, staying with people's families, and his poverty is really important to Malcolm because it led him into a life of crime, and he eventually ended up in prison in around the late 30s, 40s. This was a crucial time in his life. In prison, he joined a radical movement known as the Nation of Islam, eventually rising to be their most prominent member. There's no such thing as freedom in this country for a black man. The nation believed white people were devils. So was Malcolm himself a racist? You know, Malcolm was in the nation for a good 12 years and he embraced that while he was in the nation. Then he left the nation and realised that actually white, individually white people aren't devils, but actually the society, capitalism, the racism that caused by the West is evil, is corrupt, and Malcolm very much stated it. So he stopped indicting individual white people, but was very much indictment of the system. So what had alerted Malcolm to the plight of the immigrant community in Smethwick? The answer lies in this street of terraced houses. There's nothing really that unusual about Marshall Street. It looks just like any other suburban street in Birmingham, but this street could have been the start of an apartheid Britain because there was serious talk of the local council buying up a load of empty houses and renting them exclusively to white families. So this would have been official council policy, not to rent to black or Asian people. The national government vetoed that plan because it was clear that there wasn't going to be any sympathy for the immigrants from the Smethwick councillors. Where do you intend to put the coloured people who can't get houses in Marshall Street? Oh, well, that isn't our problem. That is the problem of the immigrant himself. Let's rewind to the 60s. For some, they were swinging, but for many, they were a time of post-war austerity. They were also a time of mass immigration. In the early 60s, there were about 4,500 immigrants living in Smethwick alone. 
The factories and foundries had a fair bit of work for the immigrants, albeit at a lower wage, but this wasn't really an issue of the immigrants are coming here to take our jobs in Smethwick. The problem was where these immigrants should live, or in this case, where they shouldn't. During the last two years, uh, Marshall Street has completely fallen apart. This delegation to the council was purely to try and make a stand to stop the road completely being taken over by coloured people. I think they should live uh, in a district all to themselves because I've got to bring this little boy up. 1964 was a general election year and Smethwick was a Labour seat, but the Tory candidate Peter Griffiths would wage such a convincing campaign that he would sweep to victory. We want to see houses uh, that are clean. Griffiths' campaign seems to hinge on one thing, dealing with immigration. And there was a very poisonous slogan doing the rounds that year in Smethwick, and it stated, if you want a nigger for a neighbour, vote Labour. Officially, the Tories denied coming up with the slogan. I can't for the life of me think that everyone in Smethwick and everyone in Britain shared the same mindset, but when it came to polling day, Griffiths won with a 7.2% swing, with nearly half the vote. So this was the backdrop to Malcolm X's whistle-stop tour of Smethwick, but how did the visit come about in the first place? Simple, he was invited and I'm about to meet one of the people that invited him. Avtar Singh Jahul was a member of the Indian Workers Association of Great Britain and was living in Smethwick at the time. He actually spent that famous day in 1965 with Malcolm. When he walked down on Marshall Street, the white resident was shouting racist slogan and he did not make a response uh, that uh, explained how intelligent he was, how calm he was. What did you guys talk about? We talked about the difficulties we are facing. And you know, Malcolm, he believed that we alone cannot achieve that equality. We need the support of the white people as well. Although his visit to Smethwick was brief, Malcolm didn't mince his words. I have come, he told reporters, because I am disturbed by reports that coloured people in Smethwick are being treated badly. I have heard they are being treated as the Jews were under Hitler. Radical words, but then Malcolm knew how to capture an audience. But was he right to speak of Smethwick in such shocking terms? Was it really like Nazi Germany? Perhaps not, but this undercover BBC report from the time gives an indication of some of the issues the immigrant community faced. Now listen carefully to this Indian's conversation with a white barber when he entered a saloon with a BBC radio microphone in his pocket. No. That's right. No. I'm closed now. What are you going to put the clothes on the outside in the window, did you? Well, you clear off. You're not closed. You ain't closed. You ain't closed yet. Well, I am. To you. But what effect, if any, did Malcolm's visit to Smethwick have? Dr John Orion says it was a key moment for the black and Asian movements. I think in many ways you can say yes, it would have galvanised those movements. Um, those movements predate Malcolm's visit, but in many ways his visit shines a kind of international light on those movements, linking Britain to a global struggle. If Malcolm came to Smethwick now, what, what do you think he'd say? I think he'd find many things in modern-day Smethwick that he'd be happy with. There has been some progress, but in many ways Malcolm would be reticent about judging what that progress meant. Today, for ethnic minorities, it's still very difficult in education, housing, employment. In many ways, we have a very similar structure to the 60s without the visceral racism on the streets. So things may not be perfect, but Aftar is in no doubt that Malcolm's visit had a huge and lasting impact on Smethwick. The outcome of the visit that 18 months later Peter Griffiths was defeated. Since then, no racist have dared to contest the election or the parliamentary seat in Smadik, and that is the greatest thing which happened.
What an incredible local story. And it's even more poignant that just nine days after Malcolm X left Birmingham, he was assassinated. Until this day, it's unclear.